Hello everyone. In this lecture, let's try to implement timer interrupt overflow method in our microcontroller PIC16 of 877A. So the circuit is simple. That is, I have connected only one LED to RB0 pin of our microcontroller PIC16 of 877A. So we will go to the MPLAB IDE. Initially, as I said in the external interrupt lecture, for using any interrupt in our microcontroller, I just want to enable the global interrupt enable and peripheral interrupt enable bit from the INTCON register that is available here in the data set. So I am enabling these two and as I am using the timer 0 interrupt, I am enabling the timer 0 interrupt enable bit from the same INTCON register that is here. And after that I am setting the load value for 10 millisecond delay in TMR0 register and I am setting the prescaler for the timer 0 in the option register by providing the value 0x07 in the option register. So we did this in the last lecture. I hope you remember that. Then I am configuring the output pins that is the LED pins as output that is RB0 as output using this trisb equal to 0x00 line. And let's come to the interrupt function. So this void interrupt is a keyword and this tim is a user defined function name you can give any name according to your wish inside that i am checking for the tmr0 if this is the timer 0 interrupt flag that is also available in the intcon register you can see here once the timer interrupt occurs this flag will be raised automatically and we must clear that so i am clearing the flag once after all my programming instructions about the programming instructions for every interrupt occurrence i am just taking a variable i and I am incrementing that. So for every interrupt occurrence I will get this i variable incremented by 1. In case of external interrupt we saw that whenever a rising or falling edge occur in the external interrupt pin of the microcontroller this interrupt function will be called. In case of timer interrupt the interrupt will be occurring in a time based manner that is for every predefined delay this interrupt function will be executed until the interrupt is disabled. So coming back to our logic, as the program starts, the processor executes all the lines over here and it will enter into this while of 1 and it will stay here as we know this is an infinite loop, it will only end when the program ends. And simultaneously when the program starts, the timer also starts counting from 59 and it will reach 255, its maximum value. And again when it reaches 255, it rolls back to 59 and again it will start counting up. And when it reaches 255, it will go back to 59 and this process continues in timer. So whenever this timer rollover happens, as defined by us, the rollover happens for 10 millisecond. So from the start of the program, after 10 millisecond, the timer module will interrupt the processor and the processor process all the process that it is doing here and it will go to the interrupt function over here. So after executing all the lines that is available here, that is we have only one line that is incrementing the variable i and after executing this line, the processor can, comes back to the main function and it will resume the process here. And again, after 10 millisecond, timer module will interrupt the processor and the processor will call this interrupt function and it will execute the lines over here. So this process continues for every 10 millisecond delay and the processor executes this interrupt function for every 10 millisecond delay. So this process is called timer interrupt overflow method as this interrupt call is based on predefined time allocated by the timer module in the microcontroller. Initially I am checking for the i value to be 0 that is initially when the program starts the i value will be 0 so we are turning on the LED present in the RB0. So as we know for every 10 millisecond this i value will be incremented by 1 that is given inside the interrupt function. We know that this interrupt function will be called for every 10 millisecond. So when this i value is 100 that means 100 into 10 millisecond that is 1000 millisecond delay has been expired. That is nothing but the 1 second delay has been expired. So after 1 second delay I am just turning off the LED present in the RB0. So after this I am checking for the 2000 millisecond delay to be expired. 
that is two second delay to be expired if two second delay has been expired i am just clearing the i variable so that the led may be turned on again so you can see initially the led is turned on and after one second the led is turned off and after two seconds again the i variable is zero so the led will be turned on so according to this logic the led will be turned on for one second and turned off for one second using timer interrupt overflow method since because this i variable is incremented in the timer isr i am building this project using the icon here To load the program, double click the IC. The program has been already loaded. Change the frequency as per your requirement and click on OK. Now I am playing the simulation using the left bottom corner button that is available here. Now I am playing the simulation using the play button in the left bottom corner of the window. You can see the LED is toggling at a rate of 1 second using timer interrupt overflow method. This is an accurate delay. So you can make use of this accurate delay for other applications also. For uploading the program onto the microcontroller, firstly, power up the development board using external 12 volt 1 amps adapter through this socket provider. And then connect the PICKIT 3 to your PC USB port using mini USB cable. Then the terminals of PICKET 3 are connected to the microcontroller as per this circuit diagram. If your development board is not showing these pin nodes or if you are not having a development board, you can connect the terminals of PICKET 3 to the microcontroller port pins as per this circuit diagram. Or you can just build this circuit in a breadboard for programming the microcontroller. Once the circuit is built, come to the programmer tab and hover over select programmer. You will see a number of programmers. In our case, select picket 3. You can see picket 3 detected. Click on OK. You must see this target detected. And then go to the programmer tab again and click on program. You can see device is being programmed and the programming is complete. Now build this circuit to see the output in the hardware. And you can see this is the output that I got in my hardware. Thanks for watching.